With riders all around you, it's easy to let the adrenaline kick in and start these mountains too hard. So at the bottom of the climbs, throttle back and take a moment to remind yourself how long it's going to take. Use subjective feeling, a heart rate monitor or a power meter to pace yourself. If you do things right, you'll be passing a lot of riders as they fade towards the top. Why? It's the most efficient way to the top. Sitting back in the saddle will recruit your glutes, giving the large muscles at the back of your thighs more leverage to pedal. Reduce the risk of going anaerobic, or in other words, into oxygen debt. Standing up or riding out of the saddle is more powerful, but will use vital glycogen stores faster. That said, some riders, think Alberto Contador and myself, are simply more comfortable climbing out of the saddle. So if you're a bit more experienced and you don't feel like you can get all of your power out in the saddle, then do what feels comfortable. Vary it, it will ease the pain. When you're out of the saddle, change up to a bigger gear because you'll want a lower cadence. Change back into an easier gear when you sit down. A steady cadence of about 90 RPM is considered normal. However, it is very much self-selected and so you shouldn't try to ride at a specific cadence just because someone has told you that's the best way to do it. Practice this, it's not easy whilst you're climbing. The effort is high, your breathing rate and heart rate soar, and the concentration of actually getting up the mountain can make you simply forget to take on calories and fluids. Compensate for this on the flat sections. You don't need to have an extra special bike to be able to climb a mountain, but you do need to choose the right gears. A compact front chain set with smaller than standard chain rings will be needed by most amateur riders to get up European climbs. On some of the Italian climbs, which are painfully steep as well as long, you may also need to get a bigger rear cassette to give you an even lower, easiest gear. If you do happen to have an unlimited budget, the lighter your bike is, the easier the fight against gravity will be. Pro riders are governed by the UCI's minimum weight rule of 6.8 kilograms, but these days it's feasible to build a perfectly safe bike which is well under that weight. It's a waste of energy to grip the bars too tightly. Don't tense your upper body, relax your shoulders. Keep your back straight, shoulders down, hands resting on the bar tops. This will open up your diaphragm, making more space for your lungs to expand and improve your aerobic efficiency. Setting out at the bottom of the tourmalet and thinking you've got 19 kilometers to the top can be so daunting that you feel defeated before you've even begun. Break the climbs down into smaller chunks in your head, ticking them off as you go. If it's a famous climb, do some research beforehand, identify the landmarks. Think about these as your next market and goal, it's 60% mental attitude. Take the first third of the climb slowly, saving enough energy so that you can push through the last third. This is when you should be exerting yourself, not before.